Tom Aspinall's the real deal. The next advancement of the evolution of the sport. He's something special. Winning the title, right? You were injured going into that fight, so you took it on two weeks' notice. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. On the Thursday, I had a holiday booked. I thought, I'm going to be able to spar like once, maybe twice maximum. You only get one chance at this kind of thing. I know that I'm not going to win the fight by watching it on TV. John Jones versus Steve here fight that everyone's going for, the legacy fight. For me now, there's two, there's two world champions, isn't there? I don't like that. No. Got to be one. So you've got to put an interim title up for, uh, for somebody to take. Yeah. Whilst they just sort of pretty sit. much, it's absolutely wild and it's unfair and it's unjust to put. What can I do? I want that fight. Obviously, I want the fight, but uh, whether they're going to give it me is a different story. But that's what I'm trying to get. But then after that, I want to be the best heavyweight ever, and I also want to be known as a guy that never turned down a fight. And I'm Josh. And uh, welcome to the Breaking Bid Podcast. If this is your first time watching us, then uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, if it's not, then don't adjust your uh, the, whatever device you're watching on, um, because yeah, we are in a different place to usual. Uh, we're on the road, uh, but there's a good reason for that, because we've got UFC um, heavyweight, interim heavyweight champion. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, just a guy that beats people up really successfully for a living on the show. We're going to be talking to him a little bit. It's nice to meet you, mate. Nice to meet you, man. Thanks for having me. And then we're going to do some scoffing later on, yeah. Um, First of all, how are you doing, Josh? Man, I'm, I'm so excited to be. I'm a massive fan. Massive oh, thank you, MMA mate. fan. Massive fan of you. Thank you. And this is like a holy grail guest, in my opinion. You said he brought some extra underwear, you know, just, <laughs> just get really excited this morning. It's like, I better take some extra undies. But I'm excited to see you two guys, like, eat after this as well. But um, for starters, I wanted to ask, winning the title, right? I heard, and it was this is what I've heard on Ro- Joe Rogan, that you were injured going into that fight, so you took it on two weeks' notice. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's true that I took it on two weeks' notice. Um, it's hard to say, mate, because I would class an injury as something like where you like need a lot of time off after, need surgery, need yeah. rehab process. It wasn't an injury like that. It was, I just pulled my back really bad. Right, okay. And I couldn't train. That, that's, if that's, I'm no specialist, but that uh, sounds no, like an injury to me. It's definitely an injury, but it wasn't like... You know, after a few weeks, I was all right. It weren't like so career ending or anything. Like how did it all go, go about? Like, the, when did you get the call? Like, how did you get the call? How did you know that it were going to come about? So I got a phone call off uh, someone really, really high up in the UFC. Um, and I've never had a call off him before. Right. And it was at 5 a.m. So my phone started ringing. Because <laughs> obviously, they're on a different time. They're on Vegas time, aren't they? Yeah. So my phone started ringing. And you know when you're like, don't know if you're awake or asleep? It was like one of them. And then... I looked at it, I thought, I'm just going to ring you back in a few hours, like when I'm awake. And I started trying to get back to sleep, and I was like, there's no way that I can go back. What is going on? So I rung him, and he said, uh, we'd be ready to fight in two weeks. And I knew that the, the heavyweight title fight was coming up and yeah. stuff. So I was like, uh, uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be ready to fight in two weeks. So what's going on? He said, I can't tell you right now. There's, there's, more, there's more to this story. He said, I'll give you a call back tomorrow. And funny enough, the next day, so not the next day, but the day after that. So I think that was on a Tuesday. On the Thursday, I had a holiday booked. Where were you going? I was only going to Wales. But <laughs> it, it was booked. It was booked. I was ready to go. I got three kids. They were all packed. Yeah. Wales Everything. is nice. Yeah, I Wales is really nice. Wales. Yeah, 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 Wales is really like nice. Wales. So I said, mate, you're going to have to let me know, like, tomorrow, because I'm, I'm going on holiday. Like, everything's <laughs> booked. So I've got it all packed. He went, right, I'll let you know tomorrow. That day passed. That was a Tuesday. Tuesday night, I fell asleep. He rung me again at 4 a.m. Yeah. And he was like, I just woke you up again, didn't I? I was like, yep, what, what's going on? He said, this is what's going on. John Jones is injured. Uh, we need you to step in. I said, I've not got a visa. I didn't have a work visa for America at the time. So they could pull them strings no, down, so they, did, they did. So we had to dick around with all the visa stuff. Um, I had to try and organise some kind of training camp within a week. Because obviously I had a week till the, I had a week till the fight week. So I had to be in yeah. New York the week after. To do all media yeah, and stuff. Yeah, to do everything. So I was like, right get some lads in get some sparring partners in my dad's my coach so my dad was straight on the sparring partners got them in and uh, I thought I'm going to be able to spar like once maybe twice maximum obviously yeah. sparring is a massive part of your training when you've got a fight coming up what's it just sorry to interrupt just, but for my information what's it, how long is a camp normally if you were like fully preparing for like a, a big fight like what would you normally I, lo- I would have liked 10 weeks for that 10 weeks yeah yeah you between 8 and 10 uh, weeks you yeah, basically yeah. one week well <laughs> I thought I had one week and then uh so the first, the first sparring session, I was like, I don't know. I wasn't, so I was training. I always train. Like now I, tra- I train every day regardless. Yeah. But 
there's a different intensity like when you're training for a fight obviously you're yeah. training way more intense where you know you've got an opponent you're training towards that guy and stuff um so i was like right we're just going to do a spa and just see how fit i am see where my conditioning's at yeah. it's five round spa different opponent every different training partner every round got three rounds in mate just pulled my back really bad oh again couldn't even finish the five rounds didn't even finish the five rounds wow. woke up the next day mate couldn't get out of bed I was like what am I going to do I've got like five days here before... against the, against the yeah, scariest yeah. Russian I've got, I've got like ever. five days here before I'm leaving for New York New York what's going on and uh, it was just one of them mate you just going to have to wing it just see what happens you so, took like the full Michael Bisbee just like... went, went all in mate you only get one chance at this kind of thing so I just I thought it. this That's is amazing. it amazing mate I, I said a lot of stuff like leading up to it I said there's one thing I know for sure I know that I'm not going to win the fight by watching it on TV. That's something that I can That's guarantee. That's a good line. Oh. George, clip that. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> and uh, that's something that I can guarantee. I'm definitely not going to win it by staying at home and watching it on TV. I know if I'm in there, at least I've got got a chance. So, yeah, mate, just went all in and, and just went, listen, I can either make it excuses or I can believe in myself and go in there and have a goal. So that's what I did. And that's amazing. It paid off. It is, man, yeah. And yeah, in, in some fashion as well, knocking him out, what, 70 seconds? Yeah, something like that. I'm glad it was, mate, because I wouldn't have liked to do <laughs> testing my cardio without any training really but was that part of the plan then just to kind of go in there and like just try and chin him early on <laughs> no well he's like a, he's a massive puncher the guy I thought absolutely massive like one of the one of the most dangerous guys in the UFC so I thought that I would actually even though I didn't have a training camp I thought I would have had an edge on the cardio like on yeah. the conditioning because we didn't see him go past the first round in any of his fights like he was just stopping everyone so I thought if I can weather like an early storm and take over later in the fight he's a big muscle bound guy as well I thought surely he's going to like start tiring start slowing down a little bit but uh, luckily we didn't have to get to that point it's amazing I think uh, like Joe Rogan said uh, again that you're like the next evolution of, of like modern day MMA fighters well rounded fast you can, you can work everywhere but then you look at like the the people in your camp, Phil the Freeze, you know, uh, Mick Parkin. Yeah, you've got like a good stable of bodies around you. Yeah, yep. you know, so it's it's not it's no surprise that you've sort of got to where you are. But have you been well received by the American audience? Because they, I guess, they won't know about like Phil the Freeze. You know, yeah, they don't. Uh, we just got another guy come over as well, PFL champ uh, right. from Croatia. He's really good as well. Uh, he's training with us at the moment. But um, no, Americans, the the big the big UFC fans, you know. Like they know they know the stuff. Yeah. I was getting like a lot of love over there, which I didn't really expect to be honest. I fought twice in Vegas before that. But it was in COVID, so I didn't really feel it as much. What was that like then? And obviously coming through you you couldn't get many amateur fights because yeah. of where you performed. Then you went to Cage Warriors and again you had to quickly sort of make a decision to get to the UFC. Yeah. What was it like entering the UFC during COVID and going to Fight Island and Shite. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely. Uh, Come and sugarcoat it. Fight, fighting in front of no one is just not very fun. I'll be honest. Like yeah. for me personally, that's like part of the buzz of it all is fighting in front of people. Um, I remember when I fought in Vegas. I fought Arlovsky, Andre Arlovsky, who's a former champion, and that was like a massive fight for me at the time. Yeah, um, I'd had two UFC fights coming into that. He was like a former champ, and I was like, this is a massive fight for me. And I remember I sat in the hotel room on my own all week because they didn't let you out of the hotel because you were in COVID and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Sat there, had my fight, won, came back, and I remember just being sat in the same spot I was sat all week. <laughs> we, I still had my wraps on, I had my gloves on, I had blood all over me, and I was like, this is shit. <laughs> like, no, no one cares. I feel like I just took out this former champion, mate, and nobody's but bothered Arlovs about it. Arlovsky, wasn't he one of the reasons that you wanted to get into this, though? He was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us a bit about that. So he fought in uh, in Manchester, actually, which is where we are at the moment. He fought... We weren't watching... Uh, me and my dad weren't watching the weigh-ins at Manchester. And at the time, I was like a young kid. I was like 13, 14. I didn't know really nothing about MMA. Too, not too much, anyway, at the time. And I remember, mate, he, he stood on the scales. He's a massive guy. Yeah. He had long hair at the time. He used to wear the fangs, like these fang things in his mouth. And he just put fangs? Yeah, he used to. He had like a gum shield that looked like fangs. <laughs> it was pretty, pretty cool, mate. Pretty cool little thing that he's got. And uh, he put his arm up, mate, and the crowd just started going absolutely mad. And like, that's the first time I experienced like a live crowd. It was only the weigh ins, you know what I mean? There's only a couple of thousand people there. But I remember thinking, like, fucking hell, this, that, like, I want to be him. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was probably like, 12, 13 there, so probably, probably fought him when I was like 27, 28. Yeah. So years later, I uh, got to fight him. When your idols become your rivals, isn't it? Yeah. That must uh, be an interesting experience. If you've idolized me, then you go in the ring, you've got to try and knock him out. Yeah. It must feel 
I don't know what word is for I it. I don't know. He I, didn't knock him out. He choked him I, out. I, I, I choked, I choked <laughs> him. Get but rid of him in I, some way. I, I, was trying I, mean? to, I was trying to knock him out, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh, he's a bit... Uh, he, he, I was a bit underwhelmed by Alosky's personality, to be honest. He was a bit of a knob. So I thought people gonna... often say that to me. You know, they'll be like, "You're actually really interested in your videos, but you're a tit in real life." <laughs> so I can I, I can relate to that. You know, it's, so you shouldn't be your heroes. <laughs> so you, uh, uh, another one I want to ask you about uh, when you fought Volkov. I mean, I, like I followed yeah. it all. I'd like Vol- uh, again another big scary dude, tall as you like, mm-hmm. long striker. And then you go and beat him with a straight arm lock, which you don't often see in uh, yeah, in, yeah. in MMA. Like I, I haven't often seen it in MMA. Like it just goes to show your sort of like ground game and like how well rounded you are as a champion. And versatility. That, that's versatility. That's what you're looking for, Josh. Yeah. Well, versatility. Rounded. Um, that were an amazing finish. You've got. Have you got? You must be coming up to like some sort of record for most um, win bonuses. bonuses. Yeah, I've got a lot of bonuses. I think in. Mate, I don't know. I, you know, I'm really bad with like records and stuff. I don't even know my own fighting record. <laughs> I think I've had eight or nine UFC fights. Nine now. And I've got about six or seven bonuses, six, seven. How much is a bonus? 50 grand. Whoa. Yeah. But it, it, mate, it sounds good, but after tax, it's not, <laughs> yeah. it's not all that. And it's dollars as well. So yeah. when it gets converted to pounds, it's not. It's not. It's definitely not 50 grand, but it's better having it than not having it. Do you know what I mean? Right. So true. I'll, I'll true. take it. I'll definitely take it. The Curtis Blades fight. So I remember staying up to watch that fight. And it's a bit like if you if you're with your mates and you start pre-drinking, you go on a night out, but then you never actually go out. When we were watching it, I'm like, what's just happened? It's a bit like when Aldo got knocked yeah, out in 13 shit, seconds. You're shit. like, what's just happened at three o'clock in the morning? You're like, eh? What what happened in that fight with your knee? Um, what do you want? Do you want to know actually what happened? Well, like, just like, uh, well, yeah. well, I had a bad knee for years. As a professional athlete, we often lie to ourselves. Okay, I think that's something that's pretty common, especially amongst fighters. Like we don't want to. Mo- uh, me personally, mate, I don't want to be pulling out of fights with bad knees and stuff like that. But I had that bad knee for like, since I was about 19, 19, 20 or something like that. And I was just, mate, I was getting by with it. Like I was beating like former champions with one leg. Like there's so much stuff that I couldn't <laughs> do in the gym. And uh, mate, I just gambled on it one one time too far. to be uh, yeah. Like one time too many, to be honest. And it just gave up on me in, in the worst way possible in front of 22,000 home fans. Not ideal, but... Um, it's all in the past now, mate. It's all fixed and Absolutely, yeah. it's all good, mate. My knee is so strong now. Like in a in a weird way, I'm like glad it happened. Like it, at yeah. the time, it was really shit, but I'm uh, I'm really thankful that it happened because I changed a lot since then. Like with my training and with the way I approach my training and, and my lifestyle and stuff, and just massive improvement since then, mate. Your physical appearance has cha- uh, obviously has just changed over the years as well. Like you you you, you look bigger, leaner, stronger. Like yeah, I used to be pretty chunky, mate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like what? What do you do as far as like a, from a nutrition standpoint? Like, how does a heavyweight? Well, not a lot of heavyweights take nutrition serious, right? Okay. But I do. I do these days. Uh, when I first got in the UFC, it was like I just eat shit. I just. Yeah. I used to think. Well, I used to get away with it as well. I like. I used to think as long as I train hard, like nothing else really matters. Yeah. But training is actually it's still a massive part. But there's so many other stuff that go into it as well. Like your recovery is massive. What you put in your body is massive. Your sleep's massive. Even stuff like I'm really, really like anal about like even being around people I don't really get on with is like quite big for me. Like I um, everything like has to be geared towards me being the best that I can be now. I like and it, it never used to be. Like I I used to do so many stuff that I shouldn't have been doing, like staying out late, drinking. Just doing just doing stuff and being around people that I didn't really that didn't really need to be around me too much and stuff like that. And, yeah, and, and even stuff like doing training sessions because people wanted me to do the training sessions when it's not right like turning up to a training session mate with 10 lightweights when I'm a heavyweight is not the right thing to do as a heavyweight mm. simple as that and um, yeah you, you just live and learn don't you as you go do you have like a, a nutritionist then that like yeah, oh, I do. You, you have, do you like do you track your own like caloric intake every day or is it just kind yep. of like yeah yep, how many do. you take how much you do a day so at the minute I'm on a bit of a deficit because yeah. um, I was a little bit chunky in my last fight which I didn't like but at the same time I didn't have a training camp for it so um, at the minute I'm on like 3,200 calories, which is a deficit for a guy 120 kilos. That's yeah, that is. I, I thought you were gonna say more than that, actually, but um, no, yeah, well, actually, if you, if mate, you when I'm in training camp, I'll, I'll eat like north of 5,000. Yeah, wow. what an animal! You should be doing great today, later on today. You know what, mate? I'm not actually, um, so I eat like accumulatively a lot, Accum- Accum- just, accumulatively, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Like, throughout a day, I'll eat a lot. But in one sitting, I don't eat that Look, much. Look, mate, you can't do any worse than Eddie Hall. I ate with Eddie, He was the world's strongest man. My grand could beat him in an eating contest, man. <laughs> well, I'm just... Uh...
Shocking. I've actually just done a day with Eddie Hall. Um, Did you? A date? A date, like a full day, like we oh. swapped diets oh, no, for a date. Said, I thought you said oh, date, right. I thought no, we could get an exclusive. Eddie Hall, Eddie Hall's actually having an MMA fight, you know? We have, he, and he's I, been great, he's, about he's been, uh... Yeah, I saw him get f***ing chin kicked last week, I was laughing my nuts. Uh, his gym? Was, uh, that was, was in my gym, gym? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my training partner that did that to poor Eddie. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, he's. He, I thought he eats a lot. Like for, throughout a day, mate, that's like a lot of food. I thought. I thought that's shitloads of food. Why is he having an MMA fight? Money. Oh, there we go. Uh, I would imagine. I don't is know. It, I think it, that's. Uh, it's definitely that. Yeah. What's, uh, but what's the uh, premise? Is there not a bunch of ex strongmen? Yeah. Having... So I think these Saudis or something like that, so, some kind of Middle Eastern country or region. Um, so basically, they're trying to have former strongmen fight one another right like Mortal Kombat but like not as cool I guess it's probably like that right uh, mate, I'd watch it I'm, I'm definitely gonna watch I, it I think I'll watch you'll it you'll be in his corner I don't know right? I, don't, I, th I know it, it's been postponed at the minute so oh is it yeah it was supposed to be in about three or four weeks and it's been postponed sorry dropped. sorry about that it's dropping right. uh, so yeah. strong he's broken the mic <laughs> no it just <laughs> some accident happened there but yeah he's uh, Eddie's a big strong dude obviously yeah big strong guy I can't see how... I mean, we spoke about it last week on the podcast, actually, because we yeah. saw him get head kicked on your YouTube yeah. channel or on his YouTube channel. And we were like, why, why would you possibly do it? Because nothing... I, if you've been a strong man for so all them years, I can't imagine his ligaments and joints are going to with, withstand jujitsu or... There's movement. a lot of stuff physically that he just physically can't do because he's just like a massive guy. He's just he's a 170 kilo guy, any 180 kilo guy. So there's a lot of techniques that just won't work. It, it just, it's just not, it's just not going to work. I can't it. imagine him grappling on the, you know, doing like a, whatever, arm bar or like a, what, mm. I, I don't want any moves. The, the name's been moved. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. like, I, I, yeah, he's probably going to be limited, right, to mostly striking, you would imagine? Yeah, there's definitely know. certain techniques he can't do. Like, he's just too big. He's just massive. But even striking, you can't imagine he'd be able to move enough to... Did you see the boxing match? I didn't. He was going, he was going for the, like, haymaker concert, I think... But if he's training with the, at Tom's gym, maybe he's learned a few new tricks, I don't know. He's we'll definitely see. improved. Yeah. When he came, he was just like really raw. It's like four or five months ago. But he's got his own coach as well. He comes up to do a bit of training with us. But um, I can't see the other guys being good. If he was fighting like a normal MMA fighter, he'd be like, right, this yeah. is going to be a problem for him. But he's fighting other... Strongmen. Yeah, strongmen. Yeah. So I presume they're going to be... The level's going to be similar. Your gym... Um, it Obviously, I've seen the pictures of it. it looks incredible. Mm. Jim King on the. Have, yeah. they sort of, have they like bought you the gym? Like, how's that? What's that? Yeah, so I, I'm sponsored by Jim King. Right. Okay. Uh, me personally, um, and then the gym where I train, it's like it's a massive weights gym as well. So right. it has like an MMA area, but it's got a massive weights gym. They've like sponsored the 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 whole gym, so right. they've like sponsored the gym itself and kind of like the MMA area. That's cool. Yeah, it's cool. As do you do like a lot because I've asked him this before because he's massively an MMA do you do like when you maybe not when you're in camp but do you do like a lot of um, strength training in and of I itself? do a lot in, uh, yeah I do a lot yeah. I do now yeah like, over the last couple of years what yeah. kind of stuff you do is like mostly compound like lifts and uh, stuff yeah, pretty, yeah well it depends on your style like for me personally I, I got to do everything fast like I'm a yeah. fast twitch athlete so everything I don't want to slow myself down so everything that I do is like yeah, quick quick lifts as opposed to like I won't be doing like fifteen reps of like bodybuildery style yeah, weights. It's all going to be like jumping or yeah, you know, explosive stuff. Nothing, nothing slow for me. That makes sense. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Sorry to interrupt this episode. I want to take a few seconds just to tell you about our Patreon. As you know, we don't do any sponsorships around here. We don't try to sell you any ball shavers. However. If you can support us on Patreon, we have got early access to every episode like this one and future guest episodes that are coming up. We've got some big names in the pipeline. You get exclusive behind the scenes clips from like when Adam's traveling around the world or we're just chatting shit in the studio. Each episode, we record a Patreon only section, which is a little bit less PG than the actual full episodes. You guys can interact with us and help us steer this sinking ship and tell us what you want to hear on this podcast. You can get all this for less than the price of a pint and it saves us from having to flog some ball shavers so if you can support us on Patreon back to the episode you're friends with Darren Till yes and up until I will write my notes out and I'm like I might be able to ask you this and you might have an answer will we ever see him fight MMA again or any sort of martial arts and then yesterday <laughs> a video came out where he called out Mike Perry for a bare knuckle I fight I think that'd be did, well you wanted a bare knuckle with him did he well I, might, I, I, well, I, I, I know he's trying to have him, a boxing I just, fight I just, with him oh, right, I assumed it was bare knuckle I think that might that, first of all that bare knuckle's absolutely crazy isn't it like <laughs> it's, that is wild i don't know about that but that mike perry he looks very good at it he does yeah like i think that would be i think he wants to fight him in boxing right. i think that would be the smart move yeah um 
I don't know what he wants to do. I don't. I don't really know. I know he's training at a really good boxing gym at the moment with uh, like elite level boxers. Yeah. And Till's a really good striker. Yeah. He's, he's had a bit of a bad run in the UFC, but he's stri- he's great, mate. His grappling's really good. He, yeah. He's just got a lot of injuries. So, so he came from a Thai boxing background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. mate. But he's, he, I think if he gets in with the right fights in boxing, he can yeah. definitely do some good stuff in that as well. I'd like to see him come back. It's a shame that sort of what happened and he sort of disappeared for a little bit, hasn't he? But I'd yeah. love to see him come back because like he's obviously a UK fighter. That's the thing with that, that I think is crazy about UFC because we spoke to a guy called Danny Mitchell. I don't know if you know him. Yeah, I know Danny, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and just how, how quickly it can turn because it's really like a marketing exercise isn't it, with UFC. Like if you're doing really well, everyone wants a piece of you. But you know, like if you lose two fights on the on the bounce, it's mad how much you can turn to me. That, like the whole MMA scene's crazy. Like, I mean, you'll have made no money coming up. You know, even up through to Cage Warriors, you'll be yeah. able to barely make a living. And then you get to the UFC, the first UFC contracts are pretty like pony in the grand scheme of things. It's all in dollars, <laughs> and you've got to win to get the win. Do you know what I mean? The win bonus. It's, yeah. it's a, for what it takes to become a champion, or yeah. and then. For, for, for the one champion, there's 100, 200, 300 people that will never even get there. Yeah. It's incredible, like, yeah. people get that far. It's a, it's a big, like, you're rolling the dice on seriously slim chances with MMA, I think. Most people, mate, they'll get, like, the most money they'll ever make is, like, a grand or two yeah. for a fight. Yeah, it's I've wild. I've made more than that from an eating contest. <laughs> it's, it's wild, it's <laughs> wild. And, and, like, your chances are so slim of actually making... I feel really lucky and, like, grateful and that just to be able to live this life and do what I like doing every day. And but you almost people. quit, right? I almost quit loads of times, yeah. Quite a few times. In the early days. <laughs> Quite a few times, Was yeah. that just the pressures of life, having kids, you know, like family, like providing? Oh, yeah, well, I was like in Cage Warriors. I was struggling, before I was even in Cage Warriors, actually, um, I, I couldn't get a fight. Right. Like, I, I, just opponents kept pulling out all the time. And obviously, the thing is, mate, you're still training as hard as, as I am now. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's still the same dedication, even though the level's a lot lower. Um, I had three kids and then, I had, like, no job. I was doing it full-time. I had no money. I was lending money off everybody, and everyone's just like, what the hell are you doing? Like, <laughs> how are you going to support your family? <laughs> like, let's be realistic about yeah. it. But look, I'm really lucky, mate, is that, like, I've got my dad and, and people around me who believe in me, and everyone's like, wouldn't let me quit. Yeah. Even, like, after their knee injury, mate, I was thinking about quitting. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's a tough sport, mate. It's a really hard sport. Like, you've got to... It takes a lot out of you mentally as well. Like, yeah. there's a lot of mental preparation goes into, like going in and fighting someone in front of a million people plus millions exactly. of people How, like it's obviously going to be terrifying but i've heard you say that you fight the opponent and not the occasion which is like a really nice way to put it but does the occasion sometimes start to creep in or is it, do you speak with, do you have like a mental coach that you speak to like yeah a I, do, I do and yeah. i do um hypnotherapy as well i'm big on like mental oh, no. mental side of it i think it's massive um but i don't know like in the changing rooms, right, when you, when you fight, they've always got, like, a, the TV, and the TV shows what people at home are watching, basically. Yeah. So it shows the fights, and then it shows, like, the in-between, the commentary and all that shit, the, the, the build-ups and all that. Um, so I try not to watch that, because yeah. you can see who's... The show who's in the crowd and stuff, and, like, Donald Trump was there last time, and, like, loads of other celebrities were there, and just when you start thinking about that, mate, yeah. it just... And I spe- like, now, sat here, it's not that bad, but... When you're really nervous, that stuff creeps in. <laughs> I try not to try not to like take that into consideration and just think about what I've got to do in my fight. What did it feel like to get the belt wrapped around your waist? Oh, that's pretty good, mate. That's pretty good. <laughs> but I'm I'm looking for the next one. I wanna I wanna have the undisputed belt now. Yeah. Like for me now, like I've done that. I've got the world title. I wanna like for me now. There's two there's two world champions, isn't there? I don't like that. There's no. got to be one. There's got to be one. <laughs> well, it's funny because I, I, I say that about boxing all the time. Like, yeah. like, why the they're like five belts, man. Well, there's more. Or, there's even more. more. Yeah, it's what, there's like, like six or seven Everyone now. wants to see you like a unified or like one champ, right? Otherwise, yeah. you're not a champ, right? It doesn't make sense, I guess. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're sick to death of talking about this, but the John Jones versus Stipe fight that everyone's going for, the legacy fight, the one for the yeah. fans, whatever you want to call it, it, it doesn't actually make any sense. And there's a tweet here that you put out that said, last time that Stipe fought and won, GTA San Andreas had just come out on PS2. <laughs> Is that accurate? Yeah, and he's put, he, put, he will fight for the undisputed heavyweight title ahead of me, who's the interim champ, active and ranked number one in the world right now. That makes me quite upset. Is that like yeah. a, Dan, a Dana White thing? Is that, is, does he get to decide that or what? Who decides those? Yeah, Dana White, basically, yeah. I mean, mate, I've cried enough about it. There's, all, there's only so much crying I can do about it publicly. With, and, and I know that I'm not going to get the fight right now, so it's pointless even talking about it, mate, at this point. Yeah. I'm just like... I've Sick of it. Just let them do what they're doing. Because like what what it seems like it would drop happen. Drop it, is going to chuck it out. <laughs> last thing, last thing. It seems like them two will have a fight. John Jones will win. Pretend, well, likely John Jones will win. Then they'll both retire. And then you f- 
seems what, what it looks like. I don't know. I don't know, but uh, I'm not going to wait forever. No? I'm definitely not going to wait forever, so I want to move on with my career away from them. Uh, so so, so like you've that. got to put the... So you've got to put an interim title up for a, for somebody to take yeah. whilst they just sort of... Pretty sit. much. That makes no sense, Pretty much. It? It's wild. It's absolutely wild, and it's unfair, and it's unjust to put... What can I do? I'm not going to... Mate, I'm a fighter. I've got to fight someone. All right, so... so good, st- good attitude, yeah. Let's move on with it, man. Fight I, some I, other... I, yeah. Let's go hypothetical then. So Stipe retires and just goes, I'm out. I've had enough. I've fought, I fought Daniel Cormier three times and I'm just going <laughs> to ride off into the sunset. How do you beat John Jones? I, I think I... I just think I can beat him. Okay. <laughs> I, know, I know that's... Uh, that I just I just think I'm all wrong for him. I just think I'm all wrong for him. First of all, his wins at light heavyweight were... Obviously, his resume is incredible. Like, it's absolutely incredible. But we're talking about the weight class below. He's yeah. fighting a lot smaller guys, and he's a big guy. So when he's fighting someone bigger than him, I think that... And the speed, I've got a massive speed advantage over him. He oh, was oh, telling me that. Good. I was watching like a little highlight, highlight reel of you before you came, and he's like, this guy moves like a middleweight. And I don't know much about combat sports, right? But I'm looking, I'm thinking, this dude's like way quicker, but doesn't really look any smaller than any of these guys. So that makes sense as to why you're successful, Yeah, I've just right? got a massive uh, speed advantage, and I'm getting faster as well. Yeah. As I'm getting older, I'm getting faster. Uh, it's something I'm working on a lot, and... Yeah, I want that fight. Obviously, I want the fight, but uh, whether they're going to give it me is a different story, but that's what I'm trying to get. Where do you see that John Jones has got weaknesses in his game? He doesn't. Okay. He doesn't. He, def- he doesn't. He's, he's the most complete fighter that there's ever been in the UFC. Yeah. But um, I know that I'm dangerous, Yeah. and it takes one at heavyweight. I guess he's I mean, uh, uh, well known as well being for meticulous watching tape. There ain't much tape on you, is there? No, but you can still fit, mate. You can find weak- weaknesses everywhere. Like I'm sure I could watch John Jones and pick out something, but right. um, you've got to respect him and what he's done in the octagon. It's incredible. Yeah, it's amazing to have you here. To be honest, like to, to have a northern guy being the UFC heavyweight champion, it's it's incredible. Thank you, mate. It is good. Thank that, you. Yeah, when you Thank think you. about it, you don't yeah. get like much representation. Like when people think of England, they don't really think of the north of the no. north south divide. So to have somebody representing the north. We're here in Manchester. Uh, in as well. so, 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 yeah, we are in Manchester, yeah. Um, yeah, it's cool, man. It's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Your friends with um, Paddy the Baddy. Boo! Why? What's wrong with him? <laughs> no, Joe, he's he's like, Adam. He watches all my videos. Oh, does he? Yeah. He gives me some promo. He's like doing an, an interview with Gary Neville. He's like, yeah, I love this guy. And Gary Neville's like, who? But um, no, we, we, I want to eat some like chicken nuggets with him or something. He keeps saying, like, oh, lad, I'll f stove you. You don't want to fight me. I'll f <laughs> more than you. And I'm like, all right, come on then. So no, I don't dislike him. I think he's a good character, right? He's got the he's got the pattern. His haircut's terrible, but apart from that, it seems like a decent guy. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy, man. He's a good. I think I think he's pretty misunderstood, you know. Yeah. I think uh, he was getting a lot of hate at one point, and I think he's like my from my experience with him. I mean, I don't know him. He's not like my best mate or anything, but I've known him quite quite a long time yeah. at this point. Um, he's a good guy. Yeah, I can't say anything bad about him. We no, we like him. I'm only messing around. We like him on the show. Like every time he talks on on an interview with somebody, he always mentions me. So I'm like, cool man, cheers. But we just want to see him come on and eat some food. Oh, nice one. Do, do you think it's crazy, like um, from an from an athlete perspective, to because he does increase weight quite, yeah. quite dramatically? Like, yeah. what's your thoughts on that? Um, well, let me say, let me start by saying, like, I'm a heavyweight. I don't know all about weight cutting. Okay. So I I don't know how that affects you that much. Yeah. Um, I've never cut weight in my life, so I don't know. Um, weight cutting is a big thing for the guys at the smaller weights. I would think surely somewhere down the line that's got to catch up to you. Mm. But realistically, I don't really know because I don't cut weight, so I don't know how he feels. I mean, obviously, he feels good because he keeps doing it, so uh, it must be all right. It's a weird one, isn't it? I mean, like, Darren Till used to cut yeah. heavy weight and then yeah. we saw what happened against Jorge Masvidal. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean... It can't be. I heard. I saw like a nutritionist talking about like um, people that weight cut, and because they cut so much weight, it's, all, it's like you starve yourself, right? So you yeah. go into starvation mode. Yeah. But they often bounce back higher than they did before, and they said that people that were like previously like obese and that starve themselves to get down to a weight, they often then increase higher than the previous weight. Yeah, but the, I think to me that's only a problem if he cannot then get back in shape for the next fight, and he's shown that he's he's, yeah, he's doing it. He's doing that. And Since his last fight, he looked ripped in his yeah. think, he's he in great good. nick and I think I think a lot of like uh, you see that with boxers a lot Ricky Hatton used to do it all the time you know like and it's like Paddy said himself he's like I, I'm here to be fat I, obviously, this is my job right but I'd rather be fat and happy <laughs> than you know like miserable and I think I'm not saying it's healthy but if between fights how many fights you have a year if you're at his level like what, not two maybe two, two, two or three, three yeah. yeah then if you want to get a, if you can get back in in good nick I don't like I don't have a problem with that and like if it's good for your psychological well-being I don't know if it's good for your physical well-being but like 
I wouldn't want to chance it if I was him, but I, <laughs> mate, I don't know. That's if, it. If any, I mean, like the thing, the thing about it is you're making out more hard work for yourself, aren't you? If you yeah. get down to that level and then you only gain like maybe 10 pounds when you, once your fight's done, it's going to be easy for you to cut. But like if he loves that, I know he loves food, right? So if you love it that much, you want to gain 40 pounds, who's anyone else to say that you can't do it? It's working for him. So I, as absolutely. long as it works, then... You, you've got to go with what works, don't I'm, you? I'm sure we'll get to ask him at some point. I think he's got he's got he's got, he's got twins on the way, right? So like he's he having, he'll be having kids soon. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. And you've got, got twins. twins I have twins. Yeah. yeah. I also have twins. Yeah. 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 So yeah, he's got. I don't know when the babies are due, but I'm pretty sure like he's on downtime now to become Probably, a dad. Yeah, yeah. Um, you used to be Tyson Fury sparring sparring partner yep. back in the day. Yep. What do you make of first YouTuber boxing in general? Not that Tyson Fury is part of that, but then we had the crossover of Ngannou uh, relinquished the belt, went yeah. into boxing, and had an incredible fight against Tyson mm-hmm. Fury. Like, uh, for starters, what do you make of the whole YouTuber boxing scene? Well, I'm also friends with Tommy Fury. All right. Um, I just think fair play to him, mate. Like, if you can fight and get a grand for it, or fight and get a million for it, get the million. Yeah. That's what I think. That, yeah, yeah. That's my thing about it. Like, I have nothing against it. I'm like, it's entertainment. If people want to watch it, fair play. Like, I, go for it. I watched that Jake Paul documentary on uh, Netflix where, obviously, Tommy Fury. Yeah. And I was like, the money that they're making, you, you can't help but knock Mate, them. fair play. Because you've seen local fighters that can't, yeah. they're not going to pot to piss in, you know. So yeah. if if whatever which way they're going to do it to go and make the money, then fair play. Exactly. I, I have nothing against it. But I know a lot of fighters especially like higher higher level fighters like myself and other people they're, they're like they hate it but for me I just think fair play man I've anyone heard, who's making money I've fair play say, hates it. <laughs> I, I hate it not so much I mean Tommy Fury was actually a boxer wasn't he yeah, so yeah. I, don't, I don't think I'd put him in that same I don't know enough about him I wouldn't put him in that ilk but when I see people like KSI fighting some gimp that opens like Pokemon cards I'm like I don't you know, like I don't care. I think for me it's not that I care like you, you can do that but if you were like a journeyman boxer right and yeah. you're on the, it would piss me off to think that these people are getting paid who the f*** is watching I don't know but it would make me mad to think like I this I'm an actual you know I can actually compete right yeah yeah so, but I, that, that's just me that's my opinion I'm not saying anyone's right or wrong I went to a thing with KSI the um, the UFC organised actually and there was like me there was like three or four other high profile UFC fighters right and we went to this uh, this thing in Croydon in London and it was like a youth centre for like underprivileged kids there was like three, four hundred kids there they basically brought us on stage asked us some questions did all that shit they brought us out the, the UFC fighters the kids couldn't give a f- <laughs> yeah. they weren't asked <laughs> mate they brought him out and they started trying to like run on the stage and touch him and everything it was I've never seen anything like it mate they absolutely love that KSI the kids. nobody tried to touch me when I did that thing at that school probably for the best actually <laughs> 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 they were all over 16 though so <laughs> <laughs> just a cough <laughs> it's actually <laughs> um, so uh, Tyson Fury versus Nganu obviously we saw the fight can you believe that that went the way that it went no no I'm still in <laughs> shock mate but it was about two or three months ago yeah yeah uh, I can't believe it. I I don't know if... See, me as a UFC fan and a boxing fan, I thought that Francis Ngannou was just like a big, hard swinger. Yeah. But he actually like has legit boxing ability because Tyson's ability is absolutely insane. He's incredible. Still can't believe it, mate. I thought it was <laughs> I thought it was fantastic. And now we're watching it and it's like, shit, is, is he going to beat AJ? Like, I'm literally watching <laughs> yeah, me yeah. like... He could actually genuinely beat AJ here. This is absolutely crazy. When like, is that fight? That's not it's coming up soon. I it's definitely coming I know, up soon. I know the Tyson Fury Usyk one's coming soon, right? That's the 14th of February or something? Is it? Yeah, yeah I, that I, is really I soon, didn't, didn't realise it was like soon, yeah, but like, soon. Um, I'll probably watch that one. You're obviously kicking off your... Uh, you talk about KSI there. You're obviously kicking off your YouTube and sort of content creation side. A little bit. What's what's the theory, thoughts and method behind that? What's the message? Well, yeah, what's, what's the message? <laughs> um... <laughs> I suppose it means why do you want to get into making YouTube? Why do you um, want to get into being an internet clown? Because... Um, I probably should have said that to the UFC uh, <laughs> yeah. heavyweight champion of the world. Mate, it's a fair, I think you're referring to yourself point. as the I'm clown. I'm talking about me, but it's, <laughs> it's a fair point. It's a fair point. Um, I don't know. I think it's good for sponsors, first of all. Yeah. I think it's good for fans because I'm a bit of a private guy. I don't like to yeah. let people in too much. And it's just... I'm st- mate, I'm still not letting people in too much. I'm just letting people in on kind of training stuff and other stuff that I'm doing. I just think it, it works... It's what people want to see. A bit of behind the scenes yeah, stuff. Yeah, just, like, yeah, yeah, just life and people stuff. People want to see yeah. training, training partners, what I get up to, shit like this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's all, it's something that I've not generally, over my, the way that my career has progressed, it's not really something that I've really lent into too much. And now I think it's the, the, the kind of right time to do that, I think. 
yeah, I think like you said, if you let people into that, and it, it, it sort of shows you as a person and what you what you're capable of outside of the 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 cage. Can't help with it. Well, can't help with the fans as well. Like if people like think, think you're personable, you know, yeah. and think you're a nice dude, you're gonna, you're gonna there'll be more people watching you when you fight, I suppose. So like, yeah, I think so. Them. I think you have you have to get people on board in some way, don't you? And uh, yeah, it's something that it's not it's not hard work for me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just I've got a guy who turns up to the gym who's my friend as well uh, and it, or he'll tag along with me to events and stuff and it's easy like I'm yeah. just it's easy easy stuff yeah I saw you uh, you obviously done a couple of uh, collaborations with Eddie Hall is he one of your sponsors as well yeah he is he, I don't know if I wouldn't say Eddie personally like it's Eddie's um, supplement company yeah Beast Farm what um, what other collaborations obviously you're going to be doing a, f- a food challenge with uh, Adam today uh, you're going to beat him Oh, I, don't know, mate. I think I, I might have know. to let you in. I've actually, uh, <laughs> I've actually not seen, like, I mentioned that I was coming on to a couple of lads and they're like, oh, I'm always watching them when I'm weight cutting. <laughs> like, that must be like a thing to do when, they, when they're trying to lose weight, they watch uh, other people eat. But I've uh, I've only watched minimal, but what I've seen is absolute machine. I don't know where you put it all, mate. I don't know how that works. In my big stretchy belly, yeah. Fair play. So do you not eat for a while before? Is that... Yeah, I'm basically starving now. Like, <laughs> I had to have like a little flapjack before, just so I had some energy to talk to you. Right, fair otherwise enough. be walking right, around like I'm right there as well. I've only had breakfast, so um, and I've trained, so he's going to pass out. Pretty moody, pretty moody. <laughs> right, we'll, we'll, we'll make we'll it wrap up soon. We won't make it a long podcast. Um, what do you want the your legacy to look like when it's all said and done? Like, what have you got a vision in your mind? Yeah, yeah, I do. Can I you do. share that with us? So my my goal was always like to get to the belt. That was always my goal. Um, obviously, I'm there now. It's an interim title, so the next step is obviously to unify the title. That, that's natural progression. But then after that, I want to be the best heavyweight ever, and I also want to be known as a guy that never turned down a fight. Right? That's because, cool. Because so I far... Always, I always talk about that, man. I hate, you know, when they're just always talking about money and stuff, like, oh, I don't want to fight for this. But, like, somebody, that, like, back, you know, old school, like, heavyweight boxers, yeah. you can't imagine Mike Tyson turning down a fight, can you? That dude wanted to fight a gorilla, apparently, in a... <laughs> Zoo. So that's cool. I like the fact that you. Like, I've never, I've never turned down one this this far. I've yeah. had like over twenty fights now. All, all no, I've had over thirty fights all in all, and it's like never turned one down. And I don't, I, I don't plan on starting. I, I always want to be the guy who's like, right, do you want to fight? Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, cool that man. It's cool. Um, I know you won't want to talk about when it's all said and done, but can you see what your future looks like after fighting? Yeah. Can you share that? Talking about fighting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's, that's the next best thing for me. Yeah, is I want to... Commentator. I want to... I want to... Maybe not a commentator. I think that... I think that being a commentator re- requires, like, a lot of skill. Like, I think it, you have to be really good. You don't yeah. have to... Like, I think it takes a lot of time. Like, I just want to be, like, do some, like, pundit stuff. That's yeah. what I want to do. And now I've just actually... Not sure if I can <laughs> and talk about it publicly, actually, but... We're almost there with it, with a bit of a job doing that. But obviously, it's got to be something on the side for me. It's not yeah. something that I'm going to do full time or anything like that. It's just something to kind of get my foot in the door. And I've done pundit stuff before, so right. just want to keep ticking over for it, mate. I've got about another. Hopefully, I've got about another between five and ten years left in fighting. So it's just something that I want to do on the side when I've got time, and then when I finish, do that full time. Yeah, I mean, many fighters have done it while still in their careers. Yeah, they? and I mean, like Michael Bisping has, has had he, an, he, an he's, amazing. He's the blueprint of yeah. what I want to do. Yeah, I definitely. love watching his YouTube channel. He's I love brilliant. watching him on. Yeah, he's I, brilliant. He gets some shit on Twitter, like, does yeah. it? <laughs> but that's all right. But that's what I want to do. Is I just want to, if I can't fight, at least let me f- talk about it. Yeah, because I love it. I absolutely love it. So that's the, that's the plan. Maybe a podcast as well then. Reckon. Maybe, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. It can't I be any know. less successful as one. I'll tell you that much. We can get started. Listen, let's get straight. Let's get into this uh, food challenge because you both obviously starve. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll cut this now and uh, let's get you boys eating. But thank you so much for sitting down with us. I, I, I appreciate you really coming it. on. Thanks for taking thank time you, to come on. And uh, I hope I'm going to smash it to death eating chicken wings. <laughs> I'm sure you will, mate. I'm not, I'm not that good. <laughs> He's so humble. <laughs> I was yeah. just getting ready to <laughs> <laughs> Right, we'll catch you next time. Peace!